Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Now, setting up an air fire system can be quite daunting for some people, especially if the most technical tool you're used to using is a screwdriver and a timing light, but that doesn't need to be the case. In this video, we're gonna run through the steps of setup, configuring, and inputting a base map in order to get your FuelTech ECU up and running. Okay, so before we get started, let's look at the hardware and the engine we're playing with here. This is a 1970s based Ford 351 cubic inch Cleveland engine. It's an open chamber head, flat top piston with a little dish in it, and compression ratio somewhere in the high nines. As you may have seen recently on the Full Boost YouTube channel, this engine has undergone an EFI conversion, so now it has a 100mm EFI throttle body, a plate with eight injectors in it, a magnetic pickup distributor, and an Alice 3 ignition coil. For the electronics side, we've got an FT550 FuelTech, we've got a FuelTech Nano wideband meter, fuel and oil pressure sensors from FuelTech, this was a Delco temperature sensors for oil and water temperature, a Delco air temperature sensor, and a flex fuel sensor as well, and a boost control solenoid. Now, while some of these sensors aren't absolutely critical to get the engine running, they are really great for peace of mind and engine health to help engine protection systems protect that engine in the case of something goes wrong. All right, so with a bit of background information out the way, let's dive into it. Now, before you even start cutting a single wire and looking to install your fuel tech, you should do one thing, and that is configuring your ECU. You want to do this because the fuel tech has an awesome feature inbuilt where it'll populate your own custom wiring harness based on the inputs and outputs you configure for it. Right, and here's exactly how you do that. The right, first thing you want to do is go to the FuelTech website here, download the latest version of the FT Manager software. And once installed, we can begin that. So if you've already got FT Manager installed, then you may get prompted for an update to the software. This is always great practice as FuelTech are brilliant in this way. They're constantly evolving their product to keep it on the cutting edge of technology, so you always have the best product on hand. Okay, so now we've got the FT Manager open, we can select New Map and greeted with this map option screen. And don't worry, we can always come back to add stuff later, but for now, let's just set up this ECU with some of the parameters we're gonna need. First, we select the ECU we have, which in this case is the FuelTech FT550. Next, the fuel table's in blue. I'm gonna select O2 corrections here. In the engine settings, I'm gonna select ignition. I don't need any of the drag racing features as this is just a street car. And in other functions, I'm gonna select internal data logger, rev limiter, thematic fan number one, uh, fuel pump, wastegate boost control, start button, and a flex fuel. And for this setup, that's all we need. Click next and you're taken to the engine setup screen. Engine type here is piston. Main fuel table, I'll select map. TPS idle fuel injection table, I'll select to enable. Accelerator fuel enrichment by TPS. Number of cylinders is eight. Max boost, I'll just change to 20. Max engine speed, I'll set to 6,500 RPM. The last one is ultra important and that is firing order. You'll be able to do this by Googling on the internet if you're unsure, but I know this for the Clevo, it's the same as the 351M modular 400 engine, so we'll select that now and uh, move on to the next step. Okay, so now with the RPM signal screen, now as I mentioned before, we've got a magnetic pickup distributor. It has a single eight tooth reluctor wheel on it, this one. We're gonna select VR differential for the crank signal, and we're gonna say not used for the cam signal. Okay, in crank trigger, we're gonna select eight at the cam or four at the crank, and that is because the distributor is driven off the cam, has an eight tooth throughout the wheel, so eight at the cam is what we wanna choose here. Now crank index position, I'm just gonna to set to 20 for now, but we can come back and set all that later, so that's fine, we'll just input 20 here and we'll sort that out later. Okay, click next, and now we're greedy with the ignition screen. Here's where we select the distributor and coil setup, which is falling edge. Uh, click next, and it's onto fuel injection. Here we're running multi-point due to it having no cam sync, which means all eight injectors are actually fire at the same time. So keep that in mind when you're setting your fuel table later. Now, primary bank total flow is your injector flow rate for all eight injectors combined. Now, we're using Dishworks 60-pound injectors, so that's eight times 60, which is 480 pound an hour. If you have injected dead time data from your injector manufacturer, you can input this here down the bottom or just leave it as default one millisecond. Now clicking next takes us to the throttle setup screen. Now FuelTech can run a drive-by wire throttle setup. However, on this basic setup, we've just got a cable throttle body. So I'll select TPS. At this point, I don't actually have an idle air actuator on the engine, so I'll select no actuator. So click next, then this is where the fuel tech will gather some information, basic data about the engine in order to generate this base map for you. So I'm gonna select medium compression, fuel type of gas, which is petrol obviously here in Australia, and a low profile camshaft. 
Okay, you've done some of the hard work here and now it's as simple as pressing generate button and letting the fuel tech do all the hard work for you. Now it's gonna prompt you to ask you if you wanna see the wiring harness now, just select no, cause we'll come back to this all later. All right, so if we have a quick look here at the fuel injection and ignition tables, you'll see that they're ultra basic and it's probably not something you're used to seeing if you've looked at other tuning videos or ECU setup videos on the internet. And that's because this is a very basic setup in the basic mode. However, we can change this and we'll run through that right now. This basic format may suit you perfectly. However, you like to have a little more control over what you're looking at, a bit of more of a 3D view. You're gonna to have to go right down here to advanced map options and I'm gonna make some changes. Now what you'll notice after you make some of these changes in advanced map options is some other menus appear. So what we're gonna be doing, it's gonna change the appearance of some of the tables as well. So we're gonna go with fuel maps, table, ignition maps, table, O2 closed loop custom. Uh, some alerts will show up, select yes. And now you'll see the fuel table looks much, much different if we go back here, the same as the ignition tables. Okay, so before we start getting too wound up on altering numbers on the fuel injection table and the ignition table, we need a wire in this ECU. But before we cut any wires, we need to configure the rest of this ECU for all the inputs and outputs it's got. So it'll designate all those into the wiring diagram. Okay, so I'm gonna configure input number two to none as I don't need two step on this streetcar. Uh, TPS can just stay where it is. Oil pressure, I will leave. However, I'm gonna make sure the sensor is right for the one I'm using selected here. If not, your data will be inaccurate. So make sure that whatever sensor is in here is correct based on the sensor that you actually have. I'm gonna change to the PS150, which is supplied by FuelTech. Engine temp, I'm keeping, and I'm changing the sensor to GM type Delco. Fuel pressure, same as the oil pressure, changing that to PS150, and I'll keep that there. Air temperature, I'm also keeping, but again, changing to GM temp. Now I'll leave the AC button here as I may run AC compressor later, so at least then I can run the wire and have it all in place. All right, so this is where now we can go through the list of everything that's missing from the input screen. So I know oil temperature is missing. So if I go over here, I'll select input number one. Now over to channel name, I'll type in oil and it automatically comes up here and says oil temp. So we'll select that. And again, I'll change it to GM temperature. Okay, some other inputs that I'm gonna put in here are wheel speed as my speedo doesn't work in this truck at all. And I'm also gonna use flex fuel and fuel level, so I'll put those in as well. Now, I have a completely separate video on how to set up fuel level on a fuel tech, and that link is in the description below because there's a few tricks that trade to that. All right, so one of the last things we wanna configure here is the O2 controls. So to make sure uh, we set this properly up, we'll go to CAN communication screen. As the fuel tech nano was a simple plug and play with the fuel tech FT550, which is great, makes it super simple. I'm gonna scroll here down to the bottom of this and now select O2 general, as we only have the single O2 sensor installed. We don't have a dual bank one, so O2 general is what we're looking for. Okay, so with the inputs out the way, it's time for the outputs. So the inputs give the ECU the data and the outputs are what the ECU tell the engine basically to do. So let's configure some of those. All right, so we go to outputs, you'll see the injector and ignition outputs are already shaded, which are, they're means they're not configurable, and that's because what we selected in the advanced map options as being auto-populated, which is fine. We don't need to do that. Uh, this will be fine as it is. You can change it if you want, if you want some custom outputs and that, but uh, it's not really needed at all. All right, so what we need here are the outputs to control fuel pump, thermofan, boost controller, and also my starter motor, as I'm gonna use the push button start on the fuel tech screen. So let's do those now, blue outputs, uh, here we'll type fuel and there we go, set that one. Another blue output, we'll type fan, thematic fan one, done. Yellow input number one, wastegate three way, perfect set. And one of the gray output here, I'll set for my starter, look for starter. All right, done, there we go, all right. Uh, that's pretty much it. Here we can see the fuel tech has full control of fuel injection, ignition, fuel pump, thermofan boost control and my starter motor. So with that, uh, let's go to the next one. Now you might be looking at some of the measurement units here and you might have scrolled through some of the screen and seen bar for pressure or lambda for O2 and you're not quite sure and understanding what those numbers mean. You're only used to seeing air fuel ratio or uh, PSI. So we can do that. We can scroll down to the measurement unit screen here and change these to your preferred setup. I'm gonna select PSI for pressure, Celsius for temperature, AFR for O2, kilometers for speed, pounds an hour for fuel flow. If you find these units change when you after an update and you can't seem to change them back in this screen, simply go to file up the top left hand corner, then options, and you'll be able to see here where the units uh, can be set back to what you want them to be. Now while we're down the bottom of the uh, menu screen here, you can also use this time to set up your alert settings such as low fuel pressure, low oil pressure, boost cut, engine temperature, all these kind of things. These are basically your engine protection functions, which is why we wanna run these fuel pressure and oil pressure sensors at the least. So if there is low fuel pressure, low oil pressure, the fuel tech 
will shut the engine off like that or at least reduce the engine RPM in case of it's overheating or something like that where you're busy driving the car and you're not constantly looking at the dash, well the fuel tech's gonna be smart enough to control that sort of stuff for you. So this is where you can do those, but I'll let you set those parameters up however you want them. All right, so that's the basic setup out of the way in terms of now it's ready to wire it up. So I'll give you some thinking music here and uh, I'll leave you alone to go wire up your ECU and I'll uh, catch you back here in a couple of seconds. All right, so welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the install process. It makes it very easy with that wiring that I want to go and populate it by FuelTech. That's a great feature they've got. But now it's time to start the engine and that's what you're really here for. So first, let's sense check some of the things to make sure you calibrate the sensors right, such as TPS and the ignition, and make sure they're correct before we turn the key on that car. All right, first to configure TPS here, it's ultra easy because we just have a normal cable driven uh, throttle position sensor. So it's just a case of pressing here on the TPS pedal icon and doing exactly what it says. So here it says 0% uh, percent throttle, press configure, and I haven't got my foot on the pedal, so we'll press configure now. And now go 100% throttle, so push the pedal to all the way to the floor and press the configure for 100%, and that's it, we're done. Simple as that. Right, so ignition setup is a little more involved and it will be specific for your vehicle, so uh, this may not be relevant if you, unless you have the exact same setup as I do, but uh, this is where you may need to ask for some help if you're unsure, but uh, yeah, great uh, resources out there like the Fuel Tech USA Tech Page group on Facebook will be able to help you out if you need any uh, pointers here or your tuner. So you know, early setup here, we set up the crank index position to 20 degrees. So what I've done here is remove the balancer to 20 degrees before top dead center. I've now stabbed the distributor with the pickup actually on in line with one of the magnets. Now I've done that instead of doing top dead center because it will now allow us to give some movement from that 20 as the reference point either side of that because the engine's not gonna sit at zero degrees top dead center, it's gonna sit around 20 and something like that. So we want a range of uh, degree of timing forward and after 20 degrees. So, so in order to set the timing now, you need to make sure the engine is able to be turned over. Now nothing should be obstructing the pulleys, no wires hanging down, make sure there's no fuel flowing through the engine as well. So disable the fuel injectors and the fuel pump. Make sure of course you've got oil in the engine, things like that, uh, because you are gonna be turning this engine over with the starter motor. Now if you're at this point, you're ready to go. With that, you want, you want to do is click the ignition icon up the top here and then crank the engine over. With the timing check on 20 degrees here, we want to now align the mark on the pulley with the timing mark for 20 degrees. So what we can do here is move the crank index position number here in, these, in this big box with the plus and minus a few degrees here to ensure that we now line the pulley up at 20 degrees. So now what will happen with the distributor locked down and the timing reference off, uh, whatever the fuel tech says the timing is, that will be the timing at the balancer at the engine. So great, let's move on to the next point. Okay, so TPS done, ignition done. We'll move over to the diagnostics panel screen up here and we can see all the sensors here on one screen and we'll turn the ignition on, cycle the fuel pump, make sure that works. And we can see here if there's any uh, warnings, if injectors might be unplugged or whatever, the fuel tech will actually be smart enough to say that there's a problem with that circuit and you can go and check that out. All right, so with the fuel pump cycle, we see fuel pressure raised in the lower, so that's working fine. Uh, all the temperature sensors look right for the ambient temperature it is today, so all those are working great. Now, if you have a thermo fan wired up, it's important to configure this before you start. So what we'll do here is we'll go to thermatic fan here in other functions, and we'll set it to engine temperature uh, on off, because the PWM should only be used if you have a solid state relay. So if you get a conventional type relay, 30 amp, whatever relay, only select on off here. And we'll turn this on at 88 degrees and we'll turn it off at 85 degrees. All right, perfect. Now, in order to test this output actually works, uh, what we'll do is we'll go into census and calibration screen and we can go to outputs and find thematic fan and here it is. Uh, now what we can do with this screen, it's, it's actually really, really awesome. So you can test any output here at any time just by pressing this little lightning bolt icon. Uh, same with the fuel pump or anything else. So what we can do uh, is just click that and we, yep, we can hear the fan coming on. So perfect, we know that working. I'll just quickly click the, um, the fuel pump here and you can hear that come on as well. So you can even check your coils or your fuel injectors or whatever you want here as well. Any output here, you click that lightning bolt and it'll send a signal out to it. So this is a really, really handy screen before you start the engine to make sure everything's actually working as it should be. Okay, so before we head over and start the engine, let's have a little look at the software here to get an understanding of how it all works. Basic parameters here. 
So fuel table. So we have a main fuel table here, and this is what commands how much fuel is squirted into the engine and for how long. So, but this isn't the only table that will actually control that. So, so what we also have here in the fuel injection area is what's known as compensation tables. Now, that is extra fuel or less fuel based on a certain condition like air temperature, engine temperature, how long the engine's been running for since starting, uh, acceleration enrichment, just for example. So for this video, let's not dive too deep into all of these, but let's just understand that the main fuel table is your base and the other tables are essentially multipliers of the base. So all right, an example of this here, if I have five milliseconds of fuel injection in the main fuel table, my engine temperature is 10 degrees, well, we have a multiplier here of 40% to that five milliseconds of base fuel injection time. Now also, at the same time, air temperature, because we haven't started this engine, is 10 degrees. And we have a further multiplier of 3.4% at the same time to that five milliseconds. And not only that, if the engine's just starting, well, again, at 10 degrees, we have a multiplier based on that. So as you can see, it's not just a case of putting fuel in your base map, and that is what's gonna be injected. All the other parameters with fuel injection are really important to make sure that engine runs crisp all throughout the temperature and RPM range. And that is why fuel injection has such a benefit over a carburetted system. Now these tables aren't just like this for fuel injection, they're also replicated in the ignition timing section as well. Okay, so with the fuel tech base map built, let's try and start this engine. Now if you crank the engine and it doesn't start for a while, well, you don't go and change the base fuel maps. Changing the numbers in the prime pulse and the engine start are the sections you actually wanna do here. So if the engine doesn't start, what you also want to do in those, in those tables is probably go for a fair range. So instead of just changing a little bit, like a 0.2 or 0.3 milliseconds at a time, try one, try two, try three milliseconds, try five milliseconds, either way to really give a big change to see if it, you know, the attitude of the engine changes. If you hear a cough, well, you know you're on the right path. So with these settings and the fuel tech already configured, let's press the start key and see if we can roll this thing into life. All right, so as you can see, FuelTech base map is actually really good and it started up straight away, which is fantastic. All right, so from here, the tuning process can now begin. Okay, so the main reason behind this video is so you can get your car running, so you can check that there's no fuel leaks, oil leaks, coolant leaks, that it idles, that it runs a bit, that it comes up to temperature, that the thermo fan comes on, all this kind of stuff though. When you take your car to the tuner, you know you're not gonna be plagued with any of these kind of issues. The reason you want to do this is because time and dynos is measured in hundreds of dollars. So if you're delaying the dyno tuner from doing his job and he has to set some stuff up or configure some stuff or there's something wrong with your vehicle or leaking oil or leaking fuel or something like that and they need to fix it, that could be hundreds of dollars an hour that you're blowing in time not actually being tuned, stuff that you should have fixed yourself. So it's really beneficial to get the car running just to make sure it's all right. You can check it and give it to them and they can tune it in no time and save you lots of money in the future too. Right, so I'm not gonna give you any tuning advice because that is dependent on your engine, your induction type, all this kind of stuff. So all those parameters, that's up to you or your tuner to figure out. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there that can give you tips and, and tricks on how to tune if you want those as well. But uh, this video is just a setup, just so you can get the thing running and make sure that everything's all right. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I've got plenty of other videos in the bank already now, as well as many other coming up in the future. So please yeah, subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Also follow the social media. So we've got Bruby's Garage on Facebook or Paul Brumby on Instagram if you want to stay up to date with other stuff we're doing day to day. And with that, I say thanks. I hope this video has been helpful for you and uh, I'll see you next time.